So now we will we will discuss. It's, it's not very complicated. You see, it's quite easy to do. Uh, once you realize the process, you know, of finding, of matching, you know, it's a matter of matching a transistor, a MOSFET, to a certain circuit. You know. And we can't do it using beta because we don't have beta. You know. So you have to find what transistor into what circuit. You know. okay, so that the transistor acts as a switch. So in some cases, you are given a transistor and find a circuit design for it, or in some case, cases, you have a circuit, find a suitable transistor to use as a switch. Okay. So as I will draw here, I will show you that what it really means is that you have like here RD, VGS, so we are trying to use a switch, you know. So when this is on, you want this to be zero voltage drop. That means that will be your ID max, ID max. We don't call it ID set because we are trying to operate it here. This is not saturation region. So we can't call it ID set. This is not saturation region. Saturation is here. So it's terminology is just the opposite. Okay. So I call it ID max. ID max, in this case, how much? I D max equal to how much? You tell me how much. VDD divided by R. VDD divided by R. Okay, this is your ID max. What is your VD max? VDS max? This is when switch switch is on. Okay. That means in on is dried region. Okay. And VDS max is how much? VDD. VDD. VDS max is just VDD. When switch is off. So we draw a line. Okay. We draw a line here. Here say this is your VDD, say. Okay, when this is off. Okay, this is your VDS max. This is a VDS max. Okay, when this is off. Should be off here. When this is off. When when the transistor is off, we call it VDS max, and that quantity is just VDD. And when the tra transistor is fully on. It could be somewhere here, you know, it depends on how you scale it. This is your ID max. When it is on, and this is equal to VDD by RD. And so you can take these two points and draw a line. This is your load line, which you can also use in your application for use, application for using it as an amplifier. But we are not talking about amplifier here. We're just talking about switch. Okay, this is load line. So the point of drawing the load line here is that your operating point must be on this line, isn't it? <coughs> Depending on what VGS you apply, what VGS you apply, your operating point will be on this line. Okay. So should we choose a VGS one equal to? Should we choose a VGS equal to VGS one? To operate the switch, okay. should we choose this voltage as the gate voltage to operate as a switch? Then your operating point will be here. Is this, should we choose this? No. So let's cross it. No. Should we choose this? No. Should we choose this? No. Should we choose this? No. Because it's still in saturation. No. Should we choose this? Yes. Okay. So it's just very easy to understand. We choose this because at this point, the VGS is very small, it is in the saturation region. So ideally, if you choose VGS equal to maximum, 
if you choose VGS equal to infinity, the maximum, very large, you know, then it will always offer this. So, no matter what the circuit is, no matter what the device is, if you choose VGS equal to infinity, then it will all be, always be in the triad region. You know. It will operate as a perfect switch. You know. But it will cost you too much of voltage and your oxide may break down. You know. Okay, so you do not do it, you know. You just choose a reasonable value of VGS which will reasonably put in the triad region. Okay, so this is a triad region. This is okay. So that means to know actually where to choose to know, you have to know something about the transistor. Okay? You have to know something about the transistor. So now say let's put some quantity. You know, say this is equal to say this is equal to 10 volt. Okay. So this is equal to 10 volt. Say R D equal to 5 kilo. Okay. R D equal to 5 kilo. And so this is the circuit, you know, and this is your transistor, you know. My transistor, say, uh, you know that the transistor has a has a characteristic where at this point, see, at this point, you get, say, uh, 100 milliampere. See, at this point, the transistor produces a current of 100 milliampere for a VGS equal VGS equal to, say, VGS equal to 6 volt. So this is only information given that this transistor will produce 10, 100 milliampere in this triad region for a VGS of 6 volt. If you apply 6 volt at the gate and source of the transistor, it will turn on and produce a current of 100 milliampere through the drain, through the drain. So this is known. Now with this reference, how can you choose the proper value of resistance and gate source voltage? So now if you choose a gate to source voltage of 6 volt, you know, so if you choose 6 volt here, 6 volt here, then you'll be choosing this line, isn't it? If you say that, okay, this transistor says at 6 volts, this transistor will provide you 100 milliampere in the triad region, given, okay? Characteristic given. Now you have to use this transistor as a switch in this circuit and you have to determine what resistance you are going to use or if the resistance is fixed, what voltage you are going to use. Or can you use this transistor at all in this circuit or not? You have to determine. Okay. So this is the behavior of the transistor given. Only to say this is not, nothing is known. Only you have this 100 milliampere, 6 volts. At 6 volt, VGS, you will get 100 milliampere. So if you have any current below it, then you are fine. You know. So let us check. You know. So if you are using this, 6 volt here, so you are on this line, what do you get here? How many, how much is current? ID equal to how much? ID max, how much? ID max equals 10 volt divided by 5K equals 2 milliampere, isn't it? 2 milliampere. So, you line, this line will be going down here. This is a 2 milliampere, ID max. From here, because this is 100, it can't be, it's not up to scale, but if this is 100, 2 cannot be here, isn't it? 2 must be far down. So this is one point here, and does this point change? Does this point change? If you change this resistance, that, if you change this resistance, does the point on the x-axis change? No. It doesn't change. Still continues to be VDT. So VDT is 5, 10 volt. So this is equal to 10 volt. This is just 10 volt. Equal to, equal to 10 volt. So you have 10 volt here. You have 2 milliampere. So now your line will be like this. Here. Okay. So it's been 2 milliamps lined up with something on there, or is it just a long line? No. This two. This is like I am just trying to draw the load line first. Okay. So the I am trying to find what is the point on the y-axis based on the ID map when the switch is fully on. So that point gives me 2 milliampere. Okay, this is 2 milliampere and when this is off, this is 10 volt. 
when this is off, this is ten volt. Off, this is ten volt because this is the voltage you come across here. So draw a line. So the now this line, this load line, this is the real load line now because you know the resistance. Then this will cross the six volt and hundred milliampere line here below here. So this device, if you use, then <coughs> this device actually your operating point will be here, not two milliampere, a little less. Your operating point will be here. You know. So is it going to work as a switch? Is it okay? Yes. Is it okay? It is fine. You see, it is fine. So that's what how you solve this kind of problem. You are given a device, you want to use a circuit, or given a circuit, check whether the device will work or not. You know. So this is fine. So this is fine. Okay, so this is fine. If you had made this equal to, now if you make this 5 kilo ohm into uh, 1 ohm. Five kilo ohm into one ohm. How much is current? I D max equal to how much? Ten volt divided by one milliampere, one amp, one ohm equal to ten ampere. Okay. So now to ten ampere will be where? So this is your two milliampere. I have to go into, into the into the ceiling. Okay. Then your load line will be where? This point will still be here, you know. So you'll be going this way, you know. You'll be shooting like a rocket, you know. Because your point is all the way over there. So you'll be going like this, you know. Rocket lab. Okay. So you'll go in there, you know. So that means now, is this going to work? This device is not going to work. So that means this transistor you have to no chance. You, know. you have to find another transistor which can deliver you 10 ampere. You know. 10 ampere, 10 ampere is very large quantity, you know that. Eh? That means you need a power transistor. Power transistor. This transistor is no good. Okay? So now you load maybe 1 ampere, 10 ampere. So if you use a light bulb or if you use a valve or something, you know, uh, a device to turn on uh, water supply or electrical small bulb or whatever, you know, or a LED device and something, then this may be very small, you know. In that case, this circuit will not work. Or you have to change the voltage here. You have to do something. And it is not going to work. You see, if you go any of these lines, nothing will work. It's not going to work at all. So it really changed the device. Okay? So this is how, so this is the basic simple concept for the video. So now we have, if you see here in this textbook, chapter 14 of Melvino. If you look at chapter 14, that talks about MOSFET. And you have two tables, table 14.1, table 14.2. You know. These two tables, one table gives a typical enhancement MOSFET, and then table 2 gives you power MOSFET. So can somebody come and draw this table? Okay, let's draw the power MOSFET. Okay, who can draw this table for us? It's very easy. You have to come and draw it. Just look at it and draw it. Who wants to do it? Thank you. This is very easy. Uh, he is, he is, his hand is sore. So you draw it. Just draw. It's stable. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Over there. Huh? Oh, so it's not normal. So you see all the pants are large? <coughs> yeah, so where are that? Yeah, right over there? Yeah, but where are like? Okay. Yeah, there, there. Yeah. Just no. draw the table, you know. Just no, not draw. Table. Right. Yeah. All right. Are you good? Are you following? Yeah. Who is not following? 
Because because if you go because the you have to be in a bad region. If you go so if you if your IG max is ten ampere, it's a way out. Know? So you so that means your line has to go way out to meet the wire. So you see here, if you if it is if it is one ohm, then you need to take the max, ID max is 10 ampere. So that you have to draw this point on the y axis. Here. So that point 10 ampere. If this is 2 milliampere, this is 100 milliampere. 10 ampere is a way off. So way up means that this line has to meet this line way up. So it can't meet here. It has to go up. If it goes way up, you know, that is beyond this line. You see, uh, right. this this process has. Yeah, yeah, you're hitting here, no, which is in the casual region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it still does not. Okay. So you want to get the resistance that puts it into a very small resistance. Small, yeah, right. as well as possible. Than yeah, so that we'll know that it will work as a, as a switch <coughs> in the triad region. Yeah. And we'll be assured. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't know where it is. Okay. I think you don't need it in fact. Sixty two ampere. No, the ID is in ID Max, I so this is this is all practical devices so if you Examples <laughs> I'm showing you, you know, there's examples you look at the question Thank you. Okay, so this is an example of some practical transistors which are power transistors, power transistors, power transistors. Okay, so these are your power MOSFETs and when you have demand for large current, which will give you, a, we will now show you an example um, that where you might need this kind of a transistor. So let's, let's, now that if you have this information given, you know, if this information is given, then you don't need to draw this car at all because I just draw the car to show you that there may be a lot of points which are not desirable. And also I have drawn this current point 100 milliampere region. So in this case, you can just take one of the transistor and basis of the, on the basis of the <coughs> parameters given, 
one set of parameters given, you can draw one line. Like here, you draw one line, that's sufficient. Okay? So sometimes you don't even have to worry about it. Okay? Let's erase this all. Hope you have written this down. Okay, because I have already erased it. Okay, so let's draw, let's do an example here. Say you have a transistor which is going to operate a light bulb. A light bulb. So you have a light bulb. Okay. <coughs> and this light bulb has a resistance of 16 ohm. And you have a supply voltage of 40 volts. Okay. So, and you are going to drive this light bulb using a switch. And the switch has to be biased. You know, so maybe you can use two resistances, voltage divided by bias. R1, R2, R3, and what you want is that this light bulb should be on at night only. During daytime, it should be off. You know. So what you do is that you put a photodiode here. So the light coming here, so how to ensure what transistor to choose from this menu, you know, this menu, what transistor to choose so that this will work properly, you know. And based on what transistor you use, you have to decide the values of this resistance. So it's a light So now you see, we can do a lot of things, a lot of ways. So the easiest way is to first draw your extreme points and see what you can use, you know. So you draw this ID, ID versus VDS. So you see, this is 40 volts here. Here your VDS, VDS, this point is how much? VDS max equal to VDD equal to how much? This point? Okay. How much this one? This point back? 40. Okay, so this is 40 volts. Equal to 40 volts. And then you go to the extreme. What is this point here? ID max is how much? Equal VDD by 16 ohm. Or VDD equal to 40 volt. 40 volt divided by 16 ohm. How much? 2.5. How much? 2.5. 2.5, okay. So this is 2.5, 2.5 ampere. So this point is 2.5 ampere. This point is 40 volts. So you draw a road line. So that means you are you must operate on this line. Okay. So now you have all these devices given. All these devices given, and all of them what is given is VGS on. What will happen if you turn on using a voltage equal to 10 volts? That's what is given. So if you try to use other voltage, you will know because 
there's nothing given on 20 volt, whatever. It's only given at 10 volt. So you have to drive it using 10 volt. And this, see what which one you can choose, you know. So if you choose 10 volt, first of all, <coughs> before that, how does it work? How does it work? Can you tell me? How does it work? If there is light, then there will be, this will capture the light, the photons, you know, will capture the photons, and there will be current flowing. If you capture the photo, yes? Don't, don't you just cancel out the um, gate? Huh? Don't you just cancel out the gate? What do I do? Short the gate. Yeah, short the gate out, because then you've got all... No, if I short the gate out, then it will never be on, you see. Because I have to turn it on, I have to turn it on at night, you see. At night, I have to turn it on. I must let this voltage divider turn on this gate, transistor at night. During daytime, I want to leave this transistor off. So, at night, I want to bring this down. So, I, I want to turn off this circuit. You know. At night, I want to remove this from operation. And I want the voltage divider to produce, say, 10 volts in this case, so that this is on. During daytime, I don't want to turn on this valve. You know. So, during the daytime, I would turn this on and bring this down to ground. So you show the diode, so it's a... This is a PN junction diode, photo diode. Photo diode. So if you, if you apply light here, during daytime, then what will happen is that this will turn on, you know. If this turns on, then this point will go almost close to ground. Because when you turn on the light, I can again draw energy band diagram. Do you want to see? No. <laughs> I can draw a nice diagram and show you how the electrons will move. Yeah, yeah, okay. This will happen. So P, this is the P injection, this is the PN, this is P, this is N. Okay? So there is a definitely a barrier, electrons won't be able to go here, so you'll be having like this, you know. Okay. So you'll be a barrier here. So this is the N side, this is the P side. And there is a voltage barrier, phi built in, equal to how much? 0 0.9, 0 0.9 electron volt. So now what will happen is then, when you shine light, okay, when you shine light, what will happen is that you create electron hole pair, optically generated. When you shine light, the valence electrons will gain energy and will go into the conduction band. So this is your EC, this is your EV. So electrons will go here, from here electrons will go here. So you'll have holes here. You have new holes here, new electrons here. And these electrons will move to the inside, you see? Now you have a you have a slope. These electrons you have new electrons on the slope. New key in the block, remember? The same thing. New electrons on the slope, they just slide down. These holes will slide up. So you'll have a current, you know. So that means the electrons from here, from here, electrons from the P will go into here, so you'll have electrons here. So if the electrons come here, they will reduce down the voltage. This is a positive voltage, but the electrons coming here to pull down the voltage to ground. Okay? So that's what's going to happen. Although it's reverse biased, you generate optically electrons and holes, and the electrons will move from the P to the N, move from this direction. You see, you have a slope this way, the electron will move this way. So you'll have a ground here during the data because we have optically generated electron hole pairs generated. Is it clear? From energy band diagram, would you like it a lot? Isn't it? You like it a lot, energy band diagram? Do you like it a lot? Sure. But that's the only way to make things clear, you see? <clears throat> to really, you know, I mean, if you don't look at the energy band diagram, then you really wouldn't know why. A P injunction forward bias and the P injunction reverse bias in the transistor is what? Remember that problem? Only way to explain is this diagram. Okay? So this is how everybody clear now? That this transistor, this diode will be on during daytime, this will go down. Off during nighttime, we will have this transistor turned on by the voltage divider. So what should these two resistors be? Because now we see we have no choice but to use a VGS of 10 volts. 
So to make it 10 volt, what should be this? What should be this? Uh, yeah, how much? Tell me. No, give me a number. You want this? Yeah, you want this to be 10 volt. Yeah, you want this to be 10 volt. So you want to drop 10 volt here, you want to drop 30 volt here. How? Yeah, very good. Very simple. Put 30k here, put 10k here. Then you have 10 volts here, the 30 volts here. You don't have to do maths, nothing, you know. Okay. So you can, other way, you can see that 40 volts, you want to drop 10 volts here, 30 volts here. You just put the 30k and uh, 10k over there. So that solves the problem. So you got your 10 volts. Okay, now which, which one do you choose, you know? Look here, you know. So this one, if you 10 volts, you, you, the current you need is how much? 2.5 ampere. So with this one, it's going to only give you two ampere, it's not going to work. Yeah. This point was, this point was, this one. Yeah. So you could take this one, say, how much is it? Five ampere. Five ampere ten volts. So you can draw a line. This is 2.5, okay, 2.5, and five will be somewhere here, isn't it? This is five ampere. Okay, so that transistor, MPV, you know, to this one, MPV N N 100 E, to this one. If you choose this one, you will have a 5 ampere over there. That means you have a line, tells you that you can draw like this a line. And then go like this. And for this, your ID max, you see, you have an ID max. ID max of 10 ampere. So this is your ID max somewhere here. Somewhere way down here, 10 max. ID max. And it also gives you RDS. 1.07. So RDS is what? RDS is this slope. This is your RDS. 1 upon RDS. Equal to 1 divided by 1.07. 1.07. So you know the slope of this line because it is given there. Because that RDS is equal to nothing but RDS equal to VDS divided by D. Or because the ID is here, VDS is here, so you just reverse it. And you have ID by VDS equal to 1 upon RDS equal to 1 upon 1.07. What is it? What is the unit of this thing? Mo. Mo. Exactly. I yeah. never forget the mo. Okay. So that's the mo. So now you know everything about this. So is this fine now? It's, why, why is it going to operate? Why is the transistor going to operate then? Where is, where is, the, op, where is the operating point? Where is the operating point? I know, but where exactly? Which point? Where the load line crosses the load line crosses the characteristic line of this transistor. So that is this point. So you can see if it crosses this point, it's actually, although a maximum is 2.5 ampere, it's actually going to operate here. So this is your ID Q and VDS Q. Okay. So now you can find a lot of things using this data. So it's, your problem is solved then. So what you have to do, you had a problem and you have some given transistors, you have to choose a transistor so that it will be in the triad region and you would know exactly where it will be and you can calculate all the voltages and currents. Okay. Now can you tell me, can you tell me what is the power dissipation? Dissipation by the bulb, you know. How much power dissipated in the bulb, you know? Which is power bulb equal to VDS into ID, okay? This VDS is across the bulb. 
not BJ, so V bulb across the bulb. V B, so you can say V D. Uh, you can call this point uh, X, no? V D X. V D X across the bulb. You know, power is the product of current and voltage. So the current is this current. Can you find what is the actual current? This is not the actual current. Actual current is this current. Because you, you know the resistance of this one. What is the resistance of this? What is the RDS of this? 1.07 is given here. You see, it's already given. 1.07. So this is your 1.07 ohm. This is your 1.07 ohm. This is your 16 ohm. So you know this voltage, you know this resistance, you know this resistance. You can find the actual current, which is this current. You can find the voltage drop here. You can find the voltage drop here. You take the voltage drop, multiply with the current. That is the power distribution across the bar. So can you calculate this now? Calculate the power distributed by the bulb by calculating the actual current. Calculate the actual current because you know the voltage, you know this resistance, you know this resistance. At this point, divide the voltage by those two resistances, you'll get the actual drain current, which is this. Multiply the dead current with the voltage across here because you know this is 40 volts, and this is again another voltage divider between 16 ohm and 1.07 ohm. Then you can find out how much voltage drop here, how much voltage drop here. Okay. Solve it now.
Actually, you shouldn't call it IDQ because when you say Q, it means really for biasing. So it's not really biasing, it's just an operating point. So it's better to call it something else. But I call it Q just to make it sound similar to something else, you know. But it's not, it's a Q, yeah, it's a, some kind of a Q of a switch. It's the operator. It's the operating point when it is operating, when it's turned on. So operation points of IDQ, um, the DSQs, if that's the operating area of that circle, then we need to figure out what that point actually is, because that will change everything in the circle. That's what I'm sort of going at, figuring out. Okay, you can't use the Am I overthinking this? Because I did the first time I got 93 from the same box. Then that's using the ideal things we put in your drop. So at that point there, our IDQ is our operation point. Yeah, this is the point. So this is just to see. That's the road line. Yeah, this is just the road line. The actual operating point is this. Yeah, so we need to find what those values are and then put them into that, right? Yeah, you have to actually yes. find this kind by taking the voltage divided by these two resistors. Oh, so it's the same thing. Huh? So it's the same thing as just using a current divider. Not current divider. That's the same thing that here you put, here you did ID max is voltage by this resistor. Now you have to add this resistor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Jay, that was right. So, so we were thinking from both sides of the head, but Anybody who has finished it? Complete. Okay. Yeah. Well, why don't we just do that? Why don't we just go? Okay. At the time of 1.5, 1.5 squared. How many people got 87 milliwatts? Milliwatt. 87 watts, isn't it? 87 watts. 87 watts. I was given a 6 watt range for that one. You know the equation T equals I R squared? Yeah, I square. You can do that. The same thing. I R I into R is your voltage, you see? Yeah. So I R square means I into I into R, you see? Yeah. So it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to that. I do. You know P equals I think. I think I P equals I R squared. Well, I, I, yeah, this is substitution. So T equals I times P equals I R squared. Thanks. You know, I've never thought about it. All the years of have never thought of it. So you can use this. You can use this, you can use this. 
It's obvious. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, it's actually. Yeah, yeah. Over here, equals 50 volts, divided by 17.07. Ah, oh, there we go. That's the only problem for the Okay, so the Okay, Josh is agreed to do this for us today, no, only today, not tomorrow. <laughs> so you can choose your pen, you know, you want to write where, you know, maybe remove this, remove this energy when that happens. <clears throat> Remove this, remove this, remove this, you don't need this, you don't need this. Yeah, do it nicely, right? Large so that everybody can see. And we send you my Arabic Okay, so this is the solution. Note it down, okay? Kindly please note it down if you have not solved it yourself. Okay, note it down and then you want to finish it today? Enough for today or you want to do some more? Okay, then you finish this and write this up and then we'll go home, you know, and then on Monday we'll do a little bit another problem of of this switch and then we'll move into transistors. We'll move into transistors, we'll move into amplifier. Yes. That's where the fun happens.